So my name is Sarah. I run uh, Lingatop Bexley down in the southeast of London. Um, I also co-run uh, Lingatop Dartford and I have been uh, working with Lingatop for six years. I have two children called Freya, she's nine, and Zander, who is uh, seven. The nine-year-old's nine going on 19, I'll be honest. And I, have a, I live with my husband, Kerry. He's got a girl's name. He is a he. Um, and we live in a town called Welling, which is in the borough of Bexley. Um, I have been, uh, as I say, a franchisee for five years, but previous to that, I worked for Linga Tot um, for another franchise for a year. So I'm, I'm just finishing my sixth year and I'm into my seventh. So before Lingo Tot, um, after school, I went to university and trained to be an interpreter and translator. And then I did the same as a master's in French and German. Then I went into finance, as you do. And I worked for a bank called JP Morgan. It's an American bank. And I worked in Canary Wharf and I was in charge of 80 banks across Europe. And it was my job to kind of problem solve for them. So if there was money that went missing or they needed to get something done or a system wasn't working, um, I would liaise with them, often in French and German. Um, and then so this is a far cry from that life. That was a very high stress um long hours the american market is open till 11 o'clock at night in the uk so i was constantly work 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 and um very very glad that i'm not doing that anymore my average day is um to be honest there is no average day because every day at lingotot bexley is a bit different so some days i will get up and i will go to one nursery in one town and then i'll drive maybe five minutes and i'll go to another nursery then i might have my lunch uh, might do a bit of admin and then go to an after school pub. Some days uh, I might teach at a school all day. Some days I might not work at all. But um, my days used to be very, very hectic where I was driving from place to place to place to place, to place constantly. And as I have grown and grown and grown, my staff, um, kind of group of people that work for me, my tutors, has increased. And I'm now able to take a step back into the business. So from next week, my plan is to only work two afternoons a week as teaching. And the rest of the time, I will be being, working on my business, growing it, um, being behind the scenes, being the backup if anyone needs, uh, you know, an emergency cover. And generally just being, you know, the manager uh, who can can make Lingotop Bexley as good as it can be. I adore community classes. It was one of the first things I ever did as a Lingatot uh, teacher um, because I love watching the mums or dads who come or the grandparents sometimes um, learn together with their child. It's a really nice um, it's a really nice thing when you're encouraging a child to maybe say a colour. So you're, you're waving a scarf and you're saying, blah, 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 and the child says, blah. Then you see the look in the parents' eyes when they go, <gasps> child just said a french word it's it's that moment and it's like a bonding moment for them but then you feel like for you as well it's a bit like an i was part of that and i helped them do that or when the parent comes in and they say oh you won't believe what little johnny said this morning oh we were putting our shoes on and he said show sure and you're like oh amazing um it's just such a nice it's such a nice Nursery is going to be very, very different to any of my other, other classes because you don't have um often don't have someone with you that is helping you with the teaching just more kind of um crowd control perhaps in there and so you are there teaching all of these kids looking at you, you might have 20 little faces looking at you who mainly think that you're amazing and you're the red lady which i often am called like, like red or mrs lingo or french i get called french a lot i don't have a name anyway it's not french so nursery classes can be really vibrant really fun you get a lot of um children just watching you in awe while they listen to your words and they watch you waving things around and then when they realize you're handing out instruments that they're allowed to have or handing out a scarf and they're like oh, and they suddenly go mine i want one i want one i want one and you try and say to them well don't ask i want you to ask me the color of it in french or the color of it in spanish i don't want you to say blue one red one i want you to say mm, blah Mm, rouge, mm, jeune. So getting them to all do it and encourage each other. Today, I was this morning, I was teaching at a nursery and um, I was giving out the stickers at the end and all the kids had lined up and they're pushing and shoving a little bit. This little boy came up at the end and I said, which one would you like? And he looked at it and he pointed to one and he went, rojo, which is red in Spanish. And I was like, do you know what, Arthur? Well done, you're my star of the day. So it was, it, it's it's really rewarding. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely more lively. Nurseries are definitely more lively than the other classes because you haven't got the parents making them sit down. 
but um it's fun just watching them play and enjoy and listen and join in the best they can and then sending the words home to the parents so that they know what we've been doing uh will allow the parents even though they weren't physically there they might be at work but they can be part of it so after school clubs um i quite enjoy because it's ones where the older children quite often get to uh, join in a lot of our community classes or most of our community classes are really limited to to the age of four so it's little ones joining in and having fun whereas after school clubs we can get up to age uh, year six which is age 11 and it really is nice to see them letting go letting loose getting out of the kind of formality of sitting in a desk and learning even though our classes are really fun um but being able to get the parachute out and run around you know walk around the room playing corners when you're in a room that doesn't have tables like a like all the desks and just letting loose a little bit and having a bit of fun still learning um they also like being able to talk call the teacher by the first name that's a bit of a luxury uh, <laughs> And at some of them we have snacks, some of them we don't have snacks, depends on the rules of the school. So it's it's just a bit more relaxed. It's really fun. And we try to dial up the energy level a little bit more because we are able to um, after school because they're going to be going home. Um, it's it's uh, it's energy packed, fun way. Yeah. So PPA has been, I would imagine, the thing that I've been most scared of over the last ooh, three years because I had never been a teacher before. I might have gone into schools and helped out now and again um, as a linguist, but I'd never I'd never taught before. My, my background was not teaching. So I was a bit daunted, but now it's something I love. Although I find behavior, behavior management still, still a challenge at times, but I think we all do. Um, um, I really enjoy it. I enjoy the fact that I can go into a school and be the specialist and help those other primary teachers with the bit they really struggle with and we know so many teachers really struggle with languages because they can't be a specialist in everything they're expected to do literacy and maths and science and 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 um how are primary teachers also going to be experts in speaking french german spanish whatever language the school's doing so having someone like me in that they're relieved they kind of go there you go off you go we'll see you later I'm off to do my PPA for an hour but also um they, the children get an experience that a lot of schools don't get if they don't have an specialist going in who is fluent they might be watching a video and they might be enjoying that video and finding it fun but the level and, and of expertise they're getting and the level of learning they're getting is much lower so I often say to the children you realize how lucky you are to be having us but to have someone that's in the classroom being a specialist and teaching you um, and speaking fluently to you. And also I'm able to listen back and correct you. Video can't do that. So you're, you're getting an opportunity to have little chats with me. And I, I've created quite a bond um, with one of the, well, the kids at one of the schools. So often I don't get to sit down for the first five minutes due to cuddles, uh, which is which is adorable. Undermines my behavior management a little bit, but um, it is adorable because yeah, there's always at least a five or six of them that want to cuddle before we sit down and get cracking. Um, and it's lovely. And there's classes where I walk into and before I can even do anything, they're serenading me with bonjour, 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 which I've changed the words to. It's not say lingo Todd, it's le français avec madame Canavan. Hey. So we we um I I do get <laughs> I do get a bit serenaded when I come in, and that's nice. It's just a nice feeling because you know they want to learn. We have been doing holiday camps for two years now and they've been going really, really well. We found a really nice group of kids that like coming regularly. Um, it's so much fun to see them and to, to see the parents at the gates, first of all, to say, oh, so glad you do a club that isn't just sport. Because my kids hate going to sport camps and that's all there is around here. And they find it so boring because they're not into sports and they just don't, they, they moan that I'm sending them, but I need to send them somewhere. We're so glad you do this. So at least they get one week of French for the week. Um, we ram it full of so much stuff that I think the kids can't quite realize how much they're doing. You know, we always do a cookery, uh, some kind of cookery every day, whether it's making last, uh, in October we made uh, tap de fin, so making like basically apple tarts. Um, it's not just boring things. Sometimes we'll make a wand out of, you know, chocolate and a, a breadstick. We've been Harry Potter. We've gone into space. We've made rockets that fire up in the air. We've We've done all sorts. I've got, you know, one of the lucky things I have is one of my tutors used to be a science teacher. So that's always good because she comes with some really good ideas. Um, we, we've we also got a venue that's brilliant. that has got great outdoor space with climbing frames. The kids can let off steam. We often do, you know, treasure hunts and, and all sorts. And just seeing the kids 
saying to me at the end of the day, I wish you were doing this next week. I really want to come for another week or mummy's only booked me on for two days. I'm going to ask her if I can come tomorrow. Uh, that's, that's great. It's a great feeling to know that you are giving them something that's that's fun and they want to come to. And also at the same time, you're helping those parents be able to actually get on with work or whatever they need to be doing. Um, and also we're not overpriced. So we're providing them something that is above and beyond what anyone else is doing, but at a really reasonable price in comparison to to, to others around. So I, I love the fact that I'm able to provide something like that for, you know, people to have an opportunity they might not usually have. You know, it's not it's not the privileged. It's just anyone that can come along and, and enjoy it. My baby, my generation. So generations uh, came about before COVID, you know, BC before COVID. Uh, it was a, something that came about um, off the back of watching some documentaries about nurseries going into um, care homes. And I thought, why can't we do languages in care homes? So I did a little bit of reading. And um, obviously, as we know, languages really help the brain. Uh, and especially with Alzheimer's, it can help the onset of Alzheimer's. It can delay the onset of Alzheimer's. So I thought, right, what can we do with this? So we started doing classes in care homes. And I'm delighted to say we are now doing that again, now that the COVID mess is out of the way. I'm delighted that yesterday I spent a beautiful day at a care home here and had a wonderful time um, spending an hour with, with some lovely residents and children. And the children were going up. This is the bit I love. This is the bit I love. The children, you give the instruments to the children. And I get the instruments handed to the residents by the children I don't give anything to the residents the children go up and they go here you go and I'll say go and give one to Joyce well, why don't they have Joyce and they'll go and give it go and give this one to Pat down the end and they go and give it and then they you know some of them will have a favorite one and that person will get seven instruments because they, they like to look at that one um and watching them all join in and watching the residents with their faces just glowing watching the kids um, there was one lady yesterday, a uh, dementia patient, and she was so excited. Can I come here again? I really love it. Can can we do this again, but for longer? <laughs> and it was so nice just to see how excited she was. Um, it's the interaction. And that's the whole reason I wanted to do it as well. Uh, it's getting the, the younger generation speaking to a generation they might not have access to. There's a lot of us that don't get to see our nannies, granddads, grandpas, great nans or whatever. And the diff the age difference between these tiny little three-year-olds and these 70, 80-year-olds, you know, could even be, it's probably great nan uh, kind of level, great grandma. Um, and it's it, they're kind of in awe. They're in awe of it. And I, and I really like that kind of, oh, wow. Like these people, they're older, they're wrinklier than us, but they're cool, you know. And the end of the session, when they've all had a really good lesson, um, is the same with with stickers. So the children go, don't get stickers until all the residents have had a sticker. So I, we give them out on their fingers, and they go over and they put them on, or give them to the um, resident. And sometimes with their dementia, they aren't really sure what they what you're asking them to, and you try and say, "Put it on you, it's for you." And they try and give it back to the child. And there's a little bit of gut toing and froing, and it's really sweet, but it's it's really nice. Um, it's really lovely, and they all want to say goodbye. And it always takes much longer than uh, the half an hour session we're supposed to do because there's a lot of goodbyeing and see you soon. And isn't she beautiful? And oh, I love her, and she's cute. And they want to be part of it, and they want to embrace it. Um, the entertainment team or the activity coordinators absolutely love it because they just see these, you know, their residents light up. And they might have had a really hard day. You know, dementia is a, a really scary thing. Um, and they have their ups and downs and sometimes they could be really really bad day and as soon as they see the children bing, and they just light up and suddenly their day is wonderful um, and they've forgotten everything from this morning and it doesn't matter anymore we also had not just dementia patients but yesterday we had a lady who has um, autism and it's the first uh, older adult I've ever uh, um, had uh, at a lesson with autism and that was really interesting because she loved it she was getting involved she was dancing she was doing head shoulders knees and toes with us in French she was she was we did the walking song so we were walking around the room and she was holding hands with the kids and then we did the boogie woogie the hokey cokey and we were all doing that all the residents were doing this they don't get out of their chairs they all do this oh boogie woogie and they were joining in and shaking and um this one resident was up doing it with all the kids and the kids were just voluntarily holding the hand of the older person and it was just it was just lovely it was lovely you have to come to one you have to come visit so i've grown massively uh yes so on my staff now i have lindis who is my mum and she does some admin for me and basically just keeps me in check as mums do uh ellie who is a french speaker um half french she teaches french for me but she's also mentoring my staff and doing a lot of my planning behind the scenes which is 
keeping me sane. Um, her sister Emma has just started working for us and she is a French speaker as well and is teaching French for me um, in more kind of uh, after school club nursery type way. Uh, I've got Michelle who um, I met uh, by chance one day and has become amazing uh, French and Spanish tutor. She's fluent in both and she's brilliant. Um, Laura, who's probably my longest one now, uh, is Spanish speaker, but also speaks Portuguese and also speaks Albanian. And then in the periphery, I have some other um, staff who work for me in the holidays or maybe odd now and again if I've got an event. So I have Grace, uh, who speaks Spanish, uh, a J French Julia and Italian Julia. <laughs> and I have someone else who I feel like I've forgotten and they're probably going to kill me, but we'll leave it at that for now. And then, of course, I've got kind of Jacqueline, who is my business partner with Lingasort Dartford. So she's part of the team as well. So I've got nine in total, I think, including me. I think I can count. Um, and uh, it seems to be growing and growing. I've also been in contact with a couple of other people as well. Um, but it's got to be the right person at the right time. But if you know anyone that needs a job in the Bexley area, let me know. I don't have to answer to anyone. So I can decide my hours. I can decide if I'm going to work, you know, next term. Am I going to work on Mondays? No. You know, that's up to me. I can set the timetable of everybody else. I choose which schools and which nurseries that I'm going to target. If there's a particular one that I've heard about that I don't really want to have a relationship with, I don't have to go to them. If there's a, a nursery that I used to go to that I know some of the mums there and I'm feeling a bit embarrassed to go, I don't have to go there. But actually, that's the perfect opportunity to get in somewhere because you've got somewhat you know, like a little link. Um, what I love is that I can use some of the skills that I've not been using properly before in the past. I can use not only my language skills, but my networking skills. I am a talker and um, I think... I have to use that as a skill to build my business. And that's why I have been doing word of mouth. You never know who you're talking to that could lead to something else. And that's one of my, um, I would say one of my pros is, is, is that in building the business. I have found some of the rest of it a bit tricky and it's a learning curve. Some of the, you know, behind the scenes stuff that I'd never had to do before, never had to do payroll before. That was a, that was fun the first time. I think the first time I paid someone, I paid them wrong. So, you know, you, you it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve. And as I grow, you know, needing an accountant, needing other people to help in the backgrounds, that all that's all been a massive learning curve. But at the same time, it's so nice to know that the buck, the, the buck stops with me. It's up to me. And yeah, I am the manager. And actually, I want to be the best manager that I can be. I want my staff to want to work here. I don't want them to go, oh, I've got to go to work today. No, if you feel like that, you need to talk to me. Because I need to know why you feel like that and what we can do to change that. Because I felt like that going into work. And I ended up in my previous job having a breakdown because I just couldn't do it anymore. So I never want my staff to go through that. And so I aim to be the best boss that I can be. I am a little mad. And they're used to my slightly disorganizedness. I say slightly, quite disorganizedness, Lily. But um, I'm working on it. And they're helping me be more organized. And that's that's the great thing. It's teamwork and learning to delegate as well has been a, a learning curve. Get, letting go of my little baby and going, no, no, it's fine. Oh, OK, you can have it. Woo. Um, having the right team behind you can make a big difference to having your own business. I love being a franchisee because I didn't have to invent everything from scratch. I was able to buy a business that was already a, an existing model that worked really well. And I was able to take that model and put it into my area, which meant I had the lesson plans. I had the, the brand name. I had all of the all of the marketing in place and everything. I also had a ready built team of other franchisee ladies, mainly who were my cheer squad, who were able to say, come on, Sarah, you can do it. Um, I think setting up a business and having a startup is terrifying to me without having, having had that model. I, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have. I had the mindset to write my own lesson plans or to write a whole curriculum. But the fact that the business has already written that, Angela's already written my curriculum and provided the booklets and done all of that. And I just have to go in and be the best teacher or provide the best teachers I can to replicate that model. Um, it's kind of a no brainer, really, um, the difference. I often get asked this question, why did you not set up on your own? Why did you buy, buy a franchise? And I always say the same to them because I didn't want to invent everything from scratch. If there's a good product out there, I would obviously use that product, but use it, you know, for, for my game. The schools I taught at, they went on PGL. So they went on their, their, their school adventure. 
and the children that were left behind, I decided to, instead of just teaching the normal curriculum, we'll have a bit of fun. And we did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So we did Charlie et les Chocolaterie. And as part of that lesson, I set them a challenge to make a poster of inventing their own chocolate bar, sweet, whatever they wanted to. But they had, the poster had to be in French. And I gave them a couple of weeks to hand it in to me. And I got maybe across two classes, and there's only a handful of people in, I got maybe six or seven entries. And I promised them a prize. So the week before Christmas, I took in a big load of chocolates and stuff. Um, and the winner, oh my word, her work was so good. She'd really spent some time planning it, investigating it, using language I hadn't even taught them yet to expand. And that just made me so proud that she'd gone away and done that. And not just because she was the kind of girl who just wanted chocolate. That wasn't, that's not what motivates her. She'd really spent the time because she loves her lessons. She loves French. I was so proud of her. I showed all the, all the um, teachers and they were like, wow, she has to win. That is so good. And that moment of when I announced her name, the whole class erupted in cheers for her and she got the chocolate. So, you know, when the right person wins, because you know that they, you know, everyone knows they put in good effort and it just, it made my heart sink. I had a little cry, <laughs> I had a little cry and she got some treaties. But of course, everyone that joined in had to get a little chocolate. I couldn't have anyone going without. Um, it was just nice. And they're all going, can we do another one this year? Can we do another one? I said, I'll do one for World Book Day. We'll do another, another competition for World Book Day and you'll all get something. So that's the next one, something for World Book Day, um, whether it's inventing a new book title or something. I don't know. I've got to... I get told that children love coming to our community classes and our nursery classes because the children come home with new words and they can't believe that they show them off. And they're so proud of these new words. And Look, he's I can put his shoes on. Or and he said to me, shoe. Or he said to me, uh, when a car's gone past, coche. Or, you know, it's out of the blue, they come out with these words and the children, the, the parents are just so proud that they remember them and they can't believe that they can. Because I think as adults, we we struggle to learn a language. We, we often find it quite hard because our brains are so set in the ways of the phonemes that we know for English. That as children, that old adage that they're sponges, they really are sponges. Um, and they absorb these words and they remember them. And then it'll just come out at a funny time and they'll, the, the parents will go, or I have some that go on holiday and I say, we're at, we're at this cafe. And, and he just turned around and said, merci. And we were like, what? He's two. Um, and it's just so, so lovely to hear. Really lovely to hear. And I get videos sent to me sometimes of children at home sitting on the floor playing, singing the Bonjour song or singing one of the songs we've done or singing Vola, 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 Papillon. There was a little girl who had her birthday party. And they did one of those boards that said name, age, favourite toy, favourite this, favourite song was Papillon because they love singing it so much at French. And, and that made me so happy. Yeah, that's a hard one. What's my favourite word? In French, I really enjoy the word Papillon. I really like the way that rolls around my mouth. Papillon, Papillon. Um, what's the one in German that I always like? Things like Wissenschaft. <laughs> It's just like the, the way it sounds, I mean, science, just, it's just, they sound so funny. Lingatot is a fantastic business and I'm so proud to have been working with them for six years and I'm looking forward to the next five years at least of uh, continued uh, partnership. Uh, it's a business which really, really concentrates on the love of languages and spreading that love and that passion amongst children all over England and the world. And it's really important that we make sure that children love and are, are, are enjoying learning another language from an early age. And I love that that is the passion and that that is the focus of Lingatot, getting them early so that when they hit secondary school, they're more likely to do a GCSE and they're more likely to be adults that speak a language. We are, you know, really trying to help our children develop and to be part of Lingatot doing that, um, I couldn't be prouder.